All right, so you wanted to talk about your and Fuzz's visit to Shern Elementary. Um, yes, yes. Uh, but I need to go back just to, to set the stage. Absolutely. When uh, Grandma died, we uh, took some money and set up a foundation. Okay. And it was called Yvette S. Jackson Public School uh, of foundation, okay. um, the purpose being that if uh, schools needed or wanted help, mm -hmm. financial help, that money was available. The reason was that grandma was a profound vocal uh, backer of elementary schools and whenever any of our friends talked about their children at private school she would let them know immediately and loudly that they should be supporting public schools um so uh we started uh, checking schools and asking if we could give them money and support them. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the latter ones was Shern Elementary, which is a school on Stella Link, sort of the corner of Stella Link and the Loop. And it seemed to me that it was uh, not very large, not uh, very well up to date in its appearance. So I thought it would be a good place to make an offer of money. Okay. So the next step was I called and talked to the principal. Principal was Mr. Buck, and he, when he heard that we had foundation money and wanted to help him, he said, oh, yes. So I made a, an appointment and told uh, Fuzz Richard about it. And so we visited Shern Elementary School. And, and what was it like while you were there? Well, when we got off the streets of Stella Link and went to the school, it was delightful. It was bright. It was cheerful. There were a lot of trees. And uh, so I changed my mind as to what kind of place it was. We uh, walked in and asked the receptionist to uh, get Mr. Buck, and he came out and asked us to come into his office where he and his secretary talked with us. And we told him about Grandma and that we had the money, and uh, if he would be interested in our giving him money to use for his school. He said, oh yes, we are, what we need is we need money to buy uniforms for the children because it's important mm -hmm. to the children that they all be part of a group. And part of that is to have a the same kind of uniform. So we made an offer, he accepted it, he gave us all the information, and we walked out. As we walked out, there's a 
small plaque on the wall. Yeah. And uh, Richard walks over to it and he says, oh, here's a plaque about Lieutenant Shern. It turns out that Lieutenant Shern, I'm not sure of his rank, but I think he was Lieutenant Shern. He had been captured by the Japanese on Bataan, and he made the Bataan March, which was a terrible experience. The Japanese were cruel. They gave the prisoners little to eat. They punished them. They beat them, and a large percentage of them died. Shern apparently was one of those who didn't make it through the march. And so the school was named in his memory. It's the first time I've seen something like that. And I think it made an impression on me. That's, you know, it is interesting. Usually I think of when a school is named after a person, it's someone who was either very famous or a major figure in the local community or maybe even just someone with a lot of money. The, yes. idea, the idea that they would name the school after someone who had been probably largely forgotten by everyone but his family is... Yes. You put it very well. Thanks. Meaningful. All right.